This is Dan Abbott. I'm making this video to show you how to set up for plotting a drawing that you've done in DraftSite. The drawing itself looks like this. It's the corner block drawing, the first one we did. It's got object lines represented by those thick black lines. They're on a layer called object. The layer has a line type of continuous and a line weight of thick, 0.2.4 millimeters. We also have hidden lines here on a layer called hidden. The line type for that layer is hidden and the um, line weight is thin, uh, 0.2 millimeters. First we're going to um, set this up to plot it on a sheet of paper. In order to do that, we're going to go to another area in draft site. Right now we've been working in model space. We're going to go over to one of these sheets, and there are two of them set up by default. You can create as many of them as you want. But if I pick the sheet one and go over, we're looking at a default size sheet of paper with a window showing us the model that we created in model space. Go back to these tabs. This is the model space tab. That's where we started. That's where all of your geometry should be created. When you're ready to lay out the geometry that you've drawn and before putting dimensions in, go to one of the sheets and now at this on this tab we need to decide what size paper we're going to plot this on, what plotter will be used to plot it, as well as what scale we want the drawing to plot to. To assist you in creating or completing these uh, these dimensioning and plotting assignments I've created a couple of files that I put on Blackboard. So if we go over to Blackboard we're looking now at the references area. It's over on the left hand side under references. Um, in that area I put the technical graphics overview. That was the PowerPoint that I used that started off the class with and that I'll be using again. That is a summary of the rules for um, placing drawings for view placement as well as for dimensioning. There's a, a sketching sheet there that you can print out. The technical graphic standards manual that we use at Southern Maine Community College is there as well so that you can use that as a reference for the way things should be laid out in a drawing. There's a draft site getting started manual which is helpful to you in terms of using the software. Then I have four title blocks that I've created in place there that you can use for this assignment. An A size which is eight and a half by eleven set up for using uh, use in inch drawings, drawings done in inches. Another A size, 8.5 by 11, set up for using millimeters. A B size, which is 11 by 17, set up for using inches. And another B size for metric, it's also the same size, 11 by 17, set up for millimeters. There's also a uh, document called SolidWorks Shortcut Keys. You'll need these title blocks in order to complete the drawing, but in order to help you understand how to do that, if we go over to the assignments under unit assignments, go to unit 4. In unit 4 there are a number of documents. One of them is a document showing you how the corner block should look when it's dimensioned. So when this is completed, this is what the whole thing should look like. You should have a title block. This is a sheet of paper. The title block should have um, corner block is the name of the drawing and then it has the University of Southern Maine and other information should be filled in as well. The drawing itself I did move, I think I moved some of the views a little closer together, but that's what the dimensions should look like. And when you place these dimensions, you should do the same thing that you see here. The first dimension placed on a part has a larger gap between the part and the dimension than each of the subsequent dimensions has to each other. That spacing is important. It's required by the ASME standard so that it's easier to interpret drawings. And I want to see that done this way on this drawing. You also have center marks. The center marks have extension lines sometimes that are used as extension lines. Very common. Circle down here. The center is extended out to indicate that it is one inch above that little shelf to the center of that circle. That's a diameter on the uh, circle itself, and diameters are almost always used for full circles. That's a radius on the corner. Radiuses are usually used for partial circles or for arcs. Over here on the right hand side, we have one dimension that's spaced about three-eighths of an inch away. The other dimensions are spaced 0.25 or about a quarter of an inch away and that's the spacing I want to see on this drawing. Now I'm going to go back to Blackboard and we'll look at the dimensions of uh, the layout draft site notes. There's a PDF file here and this PDF file explains how to go about setting up a layout using draft site, creating a viewport layer, setting up a scale and inserting your title block. This is a, a text file. It's a document file. There's also a document called Dimension Style PDF and that shows you how to go through and draft site and set up a dimension style that's appropriate. I'm going to go 
partway into that, I'm going to show you how to do a layout and show you how to get started on the dimension style, and then you'll use that reference to complete the style, and then use that style to actually dimension the drawing. Now we go back to draft site. So I'm on the sheet. I'm going to right click on this tab that says sheet run. That was right click. And when I come up to print configuration manager, when I select it, it's going to open up a dialog box in draft site. And the dialog box wants to know what I want to use for a print configuration. I have one that I'd already created, but I'm going to start a new one now to show you how to go about doing that. So I'm going to select new. When I do, based on default, because that's the only one you're going to have. And then what you're doing is actually creating a file, configuration file. So you have to give it a name. I'm going to call this one B size inch because that's what we're going to be doing. I'm going to use a B size sheet of paper measured in inches. You get another dialog box that comes open and it comes over and it asks you to select a printer. Now the printer you see selected here is actually a printer that's one of my system printers on the computer I'm sitting at right now. You won't have these same printers um, where you're likely to be. So what I'm going to do is to have you select uh, a, a, an Adobe PDF uh, printer. So we go down to the drop down. There are a number of things that I have listed here that you're not going to see. So let's go all the way down to where it says PDF. Then we need to select a particular plotter. Um, if we go down to the list of sheets, I'm sorry, not a particular plotter, a particular sheet size. We're looking for ANSI B Expanded. So ANSI B Expanded 11 by 17, 1 inch to 1 inch. You can do a print preview if you want. You know, when you do that, you'll notice that's sideways, so we need to change something. We'll go to Landscape instead, do another print preview. Now it looks like it's going to show up in the sheet OK. We'll save that one. We need to then take it and activate it and assign it to sheet one. Close out and now what we have is a B-size sheet of paper. Before I actually decide what scale to use or how much to zoom this in and out, I need to put a title block on here. So in order to put a title block on here, I'm going to go back to Blackboard. I'm going to go back over to our references and since this drawing was done in inches, and I want to use a B-size title block. I'm going to go down to Draft Site, Title Block, B-size, and we're going to download that file and then use that as a title block. When I do that, I get an option to save it or to open it. I'm going to save it. I'm going to open the folder that it's in. There it is right here, so I can see it's TBA. Oops, I got the wrong one, didn't I? Let's go back to References. I want Title Block, B-size, Inch. It's this one right here download it, save it, and then we're going to use it in the drawing itself. So now there it is <clears throat> in the directory. It's on my download folder. I'm going to go back to draft site now and while I'm in paper space, and what I want you to do is make sure you're seeing that triangle right there. That triangle means you're on the sheet of paper. Double clicking in this little window, triangle goes away. You get the X and Y icon instead. That means you're in model space. Going back out to paper space, type the letter I which stands for insert block. Instead of finding a block in the drawing, which I don't have, I'm going to go to the Browse button. I'm going to go and find that title block that I just downloaded. It happens to be in Downloads. I'll select it, and I'm just going to leave all these settings the way they are. So I'm going to bring this in at 0, 0, and then we'll see if we have to move it. We're not going to explode it, and I don't want you to ever explode a block. I'm going to pick OK, and it comes in. I take a look at it. It is almost fine. But you notice it's a little bit too big. It's outside what's called the printable area right here. So what I need to do is to move it. This title block has zones on it. I'm going to move it so that the zones are off the sheet. Bring it over here like that. See if that gives me enough. And that does bring it inside. So I'm now going to move this again. I'm using the move command. I'm grabbing that. I'm going to move to the right a little bit. So now I'm going to use the preview command. And the preview command will show me what things will look like. I've got a title block. There's enough room on the sheet for everything I need. I'll hit the escape key. Now I know how much room I have the sheet of paper. I'm going to take that viewport. I'm going to grip the corners and I'm just going to change the size and shape of the viewport so that it fills up the available area. So that's how much space I have to draw in. I'm going to double click inside. Position that slightly to the left. It looks like it's got plenty of room. Now I'm going to go over and make sure that the scale on that viewport is one to one. Once I know it's one to one, I'm going to go up to that little lock button right here and I'm going to change it from no to yes. 
which means now when I zoom it won't change the actual plot scale and if I plot this when it comes out on the sheet of paper it's going to be looking it's going to look like this with a scale of one to one now I'm going to go up to the layer dialog box and the layer dialog box I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to create a layer for the viewport I call it a viewport I call it a viewport and I'm going to give that the color yellow because that's the color I like to use for viewports because it doesn't show up very well and then the key thing I'm doing is going all the way to the right on this viewport and I'm going to keep going and keep going until I find the print column I'm going to select the printer puts a red line through it what that means is that that layer will not plot now I'm going to take the edge of that viewport and I'm going to put that viewport on a viewport layer. Now that yellow isn't, doesn't show up very well, but it does give me something I can select. My viewport's on the right layer and now what I can do is start putting dimensions in after setting up a dimension style. We're going to cover that next. I'm going to stop this video and then add the dimension style by picking this up 